Good morning, everybody. I am Mani Srinivasan from Varix Technologies. Um, City of Warwick, the following the star is here. Fine. Um, I'm continuing on the first two uh, speakers, Mark and David, um, where they said the drivers for the carrier Ethernet networks, and uh, one was the mobile backhaul, which Mark mentioned. And David touched upon how um, they could, one could create a network with the solution that Cisco provides and also similar other vendors provides. My view is certain aspects of testing, uh, how will you create the network, uh, what are the aspects that one, the service provider especially, needs to do when they have to test the network to get it up going. So the first slide um, is just to have an idea. So there are drivers for the uh, carrier Ethernet to bring in. Uh, so just to recap it here, to say that the business, the backhaul, and the um, other applications are driving it. And how is this carrier Ethernet service as a provider? Um, MEF has been the standard body defining it along with the other standard bodies the last 10 years. Uh, so this we are aware that there is a driver in the marketplace which is driving the bandwidth requirement and the Ethernet providing a solution to, to handle the bandwidth requirement. Uh, the next slide, uh, please. So how is this provided? It's provided as Ethernet services, um, which uh, has the five fundamental aspects that Ethernet needs to provide to make it as carrier Ethernet from the LAN space, uh, which are it's, uh, making it standardized services, reliability, um, the scalability, management, and the quality of service. So we know uh, that these are provided as a point-to-point -point service, or a point-to-multi-point service, or multi-point-to-multi-point -point -point service, defining the MEF by E-Line, E-Line, and E-Tree services. Next slide, please. And how this is provided, we are not going to replace all the network all over with the new hardware. So Ethernet is transmitted over existing various different access technologies, and it reaches the uh, end customer place. I place these slides to get us a perspective into going into carrier Ethernet services. Next slide, please. So, carrier Ethernet service and the service provider enables for a customer from one end to the other end is defined as an Ethernet virtual connection connecting to the two endpoints. So, it is connecting the user network interface or in short form for the UNI which is the demarcation point between the customer and the service provider. The definition for the UNI are provided in MEF 13 and MEF 20 standard. So the two UNIs are the end points, as shown in the diagram. The two UNIs are the end points for the customer, and we have the Ethernet virtual circuit which is connecting between them, and this definition is in MEF 6.1. Now, that could be a service provider, who could provide the service all by himself to the customer if his entire network could handle. Now, when we talk of the entire flow, where we have the ability to connect, we have service providers working in together and making the availability across the globe. So here we have the ENR9 enabling global interconnect, which is external network, network interface, enabling the customer to connect across continents or across the globe. So in that concept, we have the ENI defined in MEF 26. And how it is connected between each service provider network, we have the building block, which is the operator virtual connection. Each operator provides their building block, and with the help of the ENI, these pieces are connected to provide the end-to-end -end EVC for the end customer. Next slide. So you have set up the connection, and you have to test the connection. As uh, David was mentioning in his centralized uh, solution, you, when you click go, it gets the connector and it verifies. He mentioned that it verifies. What are the verification that we tend to do? Here's what I'm touching up on here. So you need to verify whether your circuit can handle the expected data types. So is it a unicast data that's expected to go from one to end, it's a point to point, with a point to multipoint and multi point to multi point where it handles the multicast and the broadcast data. Whether if it's an EPL circuit, Ethernet private line circuit, whether all VLAN tag packets goes on the same circuit, which is all to one bundling. 
you can have one interface unit from where you branch off to two different EVCs which is called as a service multiplexing. So your, your data is differentiated based on the VLAN tags. So if you have EVPL circuits, you verify whether the circuit endpoint handles data based on the VLAN tags and reaches it to the corresponding destination. You are expect you are creating this in Ethernet, so you have the layer two control protocols such as the spanning tree protocols, LACP, and various others which are running on the two different networks. You would define whether you want to peer your protocol or you want to tunnel this protocol PDUs across your work, across your EVC. So that is handled, and how we are doing it is the layer two control protocol handling. Bandwidth profile. So you commit to your customer that I give you a CIR of 2 megabits or 5 megabits or as you keep increasing it, how whether the circuit really does the bandwidth profiling for the committed SLA. Performance metrics, because one of the real usage of this is a financial industry which is driving it to say that my data has to be within a particular millisecond or microsecond delays and jitters. So whether the intended performance metrics of delay, jitter, and loss ratio are met by the circuit is, is to be verified. How do we go about doing this is the methodology is defined in 2544 and the Y156M. Next slide please. So the people service providers started using RFC 2544 based testing which was initially defined for device verification. It's a benchmarking methodology for networking devices. It has six components. Two of them are not applicable for circuits which are such, in, such as system restart and then when the system has a heavy load. The remaining concepts such as latency verification, bandwidth verification can be used. However, there are limitations which are being addressed by the new ITUT defined standard Y156M. What it says is, we enter a test configuration, we start the test. Enter test configuration is this particular virtual circuit with the CIR, uh, with the bandwidth profile, etc. It verifies whether the network is configured correctly. And then, once the network configuration is done, it goes to the second phase of testing whether the internet parameters are done. Next slide, please. So, the network configuration test, it verifies you are providing all the necessary services. And then, it generates transmitting data in steps. First, we verify until the committed information rate in four steps. Verify the circuit meets the CIR. Then, if there is an excess information rate that you have committed, it verifies data until EIR and pumps even more to see whether the circuit handles the committed CIR and EIR. Next slide. In RFC 2544, it verifies sending data. But now, we are talking about this circuit which is handling different types of data traffic. So, you could have a data traffic which is really sensitive. You can have a data traffic which is not so. Typically, we say that you have a gold service or a silver service or a bronze service, different types of services. Now, what happens in the circuit when different data flows at the same time, which are categorized for different services? Why 156M testing methodology indicates that we generate data traffic that simulates these three or whatever appropriate services across the circuit and see how each service, whether it has an impact on the other service. So this Y156SAM is a much better testing tool for the service providers in implementing to verify their circuit or not. This methodologies are now driven, taken as a, as a starting step by the MEF and working on their service activation project, which is the current work uh, that's going on in the technical committee. Next slide, please. So we touched upon management. Uh, yes, as Mark said, it, it could be, we can take a long time. Here I'm trying to give you a view how this management could be done at different <laughs> levels. So there is a management at the subscriber level who goes from end to end. We can verify how it is from end to end. So we have a subscriber management entity, we can have a test management entity, and then for the service provider and its operators. The next slide, please. How it gets implemented in the device. So looking at, if you focus inside the box and you look at how it is, so we have the maintenance endpoint, which is the MEP. 
and the maintenance intermediate point MIP defined and implemented in the customer premise equipment and the network interface device, the NIPS. And they work in tandem to enable the uh, verification of the management aspect or the maintenance aspect when the circuit is turned on. The next slide, please. <coughs> so, taking as an example, now we have different maintenance domains, maintenance levels. This figure gives an idea what would be the maintenance endpoint levels and domains that we would create between the, each of the devices. So we have the link OAM, which is defined by the 802.3ah, um, defined at this point, which is a link tuning, um, and also between the peers, and between the endpoints, uh, between the service, uh, service domain and, and between the operators. So this gives an example of that. Now we have done all of that, and what typically a service provider does a test. So he used test tools that would verify whether the data flow between an uh, endpoint and the customer point, whether it works okay. So this is the first operator use case where the verification in using loopback packets and so synthetic <coughs> test frames to verify the circuits are okay, it meets the internet performance. Next slide please. So first one was from the first point to the second, now this is from a central location going all the way to the end. So this is the second operator use case. The next slide please. And um, here is what first I talked about different operators working together. So an operator can um, finish until his end interconnection point, the ENI, and then verify the test traffic. And in the next um, deployment scenario, next slide please. Uh, one can go until the end of the customer, so connecting across the operators and do the verification. So to conclude, um, the next slide, to conclude, at turn up of the services, service provider verifies with the tool set, which is uh, based on RFC 2544 and 156 SAM, Y56 SAM from IDUD, to verify the C services are up to the mark, it meets the SLS. Once the verification is, this is simplified, the service provider context using the MEF defined attributes, if the verification is being done, and it is done in an, it could be done in an automated manner. It's because all providers, to my understanding, are implementing the standards based. We have very well standard defined now. So we have a standard based MIPS and the protocol. So it helps to define them using the MAPs and MFPs, the measurement points. And the test tool set that the industry is looking forward to help the service providers to make it a standardized way of testing the circuit. Because when different service providers connect to provide it to the end customer, the service provider A and service provider B verifies it in the same way. Um, so what about Verix? We are a test solution company providing testing solutions for the communication space for the carry internet. Uh, we have good tools on. Please come by for any clarification questions. Thank you. Thank you.